It's a, it's, it's a, it's a. There's this viral video going around where someone puts spaghetti into a macaroni noodle and it shoots out little spaghetti projectiles. <laughs> so does this actually work? Well, let's take a little piece of macaroni and a piece of spaghetti and see what happens. This is crazy, this actually works. I wanna see why this is happening. How does spaghetti magically turn into tiny projectiles that get launched with a lot of force just by inserting them into macaroni? Breaking spaghetti by itself is one of the most interesting failure phenomenon that I know of. When you break something stiff like a pencil, normally it just breaks in two pieces. But with spaghetti, that's not the case. When you bend spaghetti like this on its end, it almost never snaps into just two pieces. So it almost always snaps in two or more places, leaving little pieces flying everywhere. If we look in slow motion, you can see how it breaks, sending these tinier pieces flying everywhere. So if this intrigues you, you're not alone. In this clip from a 1993 Nova episode about the great physicist Richard Feynman, his friend talks about how one night he and Feynman were making spaghetti and he broke one and it broke into three pieces. So he said, hey Richard, why does this happen? So they spent the next two hours coming up with crazy theories about why spaghetti breaks in three pieces and doing different experiments with the spaghetti. But at the end of it all, he said they had a bunch of broken spaghetti and no good theory for why spaghetti breaks into three pieces. It wasn't until recently that researchers were able to figure out why spaghetti breaks like this. In 2005, two French researchers were able to mathematically model why this happens by modeling the dynamics of bent rods that are suddenly released. So you'd think that when you're bending the spaghetti and then one point gets beyond the limit of curvature and it breaks, that would release the tension in the rod and you'd end up with just two pieces. But what actually happens is when that first break happens somewhere in the rod, then this sends a flexural wave down the rod. This flexural wave actually increases the curvature of the spaghetti. So you can see that the little kink happens right in the rod here. That's where the next break happens. But then in 2018, researchers further discovered that it's actually possible to make spaghetti break into only two pieces if you twist the spaghetti really hard. So this combination of twisting and bending waves combine so that the spaghetti no longer goes past the limit of curvature and breaks in only two pieces. But it's really hard to do. You have to bend it to at least 250 degrees past its starting point, which you can't really do with your hand that easily. This is why if you ever break spaghetti before cooking it, I don't know why, but some people do it, you can see that little pieces fly everywhere. But if you give it a twist first, it doesn't break into as many pieces. They also found that when you bend the spaghetti fast, it sends acoustic and bending waves down the rod that pre-weaken the spaghetti. So this causes it to fracture into many small pieces and not just three or four like normally. See, when I move it really fast, it breaks into a lot of pieces. Now all of this is for spaghetti being broken in open space, but what happens when we confine the edges of the spaghetti? Well, let's look at this 3D printed curved tube that will act as our macaroni. This works so much better than the macaroni. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> I left one side open so we can see inside it as it's fracturing and shooting. First, you can see that the spaghetti is only breaking at one spot for each fracture. So by confining the spaghetti, we can break it into only two pieces, not three or more like we get when it's unconfined. And at each break, the short end of the spaghetti goes launching out of the tube. So where's that linear energy coming from? Well, notice at each fracture point how the ends of the spaghetti move very quickly away from the fracture point. Well, we can turn that fast-moving rod end into linear motion by hitting it against a slanted edge. For example, if I drop the spaghetti on a slanted surface, the spaghetti will get launched forward after it hits the slanted surface. So the slanted edge of the tube right here redirects the momentum of the fast-moving spaghetti edges, and it turns it into linear momentum to launch the tiny piece of spaghetti out the end of the tube. It's amazing how much force is generated from this small break in the spaghetti. Okay, this is crazy. Watch how fast this actually shoots. <laughs> Now it may seem that spaghetti has some magical properties to be able to break in this amazing way, but actually any brittle elastic rod will do the same thing. 
For example, when a pole vaulter's pole breaks, it will generally not just break in two pieces, but a lot of times it'll snap into three or more pieces, like shown here. It just turns out that spaghetti is just the right strength and length, and it's easy enough to break by hand. And it also happens to fit directly into a macaroni piece, which led to the discovery of the macaroni launcher. Now, if you want to try the spaghetti launcher, this is large elbow macaroni number 74. It seems to work pretty well, but I had to buy it on Amazon to get the big diameter. A lot of times macaroni is a lot smaller. I'll also put the STL file in my description for the 3D printed launcher. This works way better than the noodles. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.